Hey guys, you're with Tesla Tom. Thanks so much for joining us on Ludicrous Feed. In front of me here on the whiteboard are my plans for installing new solar panels on my roof. The red here is my existing 3 kilowatt panels uh, running off a 3.6 kilowatt single phase string inverter. Uh, the blue represents the new panels which I have planned to put on the roof. 5.4 kilowatt worth of panels plus single phase uh, micro inverters by end phase and I'll go through why I chose micro inverters over a string inverter a bit later on um, Just keep note here. This is a lower roof on my house Whereas up here is a um, up here is in the second story. I've got a two-story house and I'll, And that's part of the reason why I chose uh, micro inverters because this lower roof here gets shaded sometimes uh, Towards the end of the day, especially in winter so that's part of the reason why I chose Enphase, but again, I'll go through that a bit later on. I've also mapped out the sun's trajectory over my house between the summer solstice and also the winter solstice, which is the shortest day of the year versus the longest day of the year. Um, as you can see, in the sun comes up here, back here, uh, uh, during summer, but whereas it comes up here in winter, sets here in winter, but also uh, sets here in summer. The reality is, though, in summer, it's it, I don't get that much sun because I live uh, at the you know, at the bottom of a hill basically so it's got to come up over the houses in front of me to get to my house so in reality in summer on the longest days of the year it only really rises about there from experience and, uh, this side of the house will only get you know probably two or three hours worth of sun at its best trajectory before the rest of the house gets uh, the sunlight in winter, you know, it's even worse obviously, um, it comes up over there and in reality because of the houses again I only get the rays about there uh, and again it's sun sets about there uh, and it disappears over my neighbours houses about there. Same with summer, sets here in actuality but um, in reality uh, in experience it sets about there behind uh, the hills behind me so that's kind of the range of sunlight I get in my house. I'm gonna. I'm sure you're gonna ask me why I didn't install panels on this side. Well, I've, I've got SunX solar pool heating panels on this side. We do have a pool. I chose not to move these over here because I think it's probably not worth the expense to get that extra couple of hours during summer and basically nothing in winter. So I figured, you know what, we do like the pool heating and it is very effective for our pool, so we're gonna leave that for the time being. And I've calculated that that should be enough to power my house for most of the year. And I'll go through as well the electrical side of things with regards to its um, integration with the power wall too, uh, as well as a three phase home. So like I said, I've got a power wall too and I live in a three phase home. So how this is gonna work with a power wall too is that I'm going to get the installer to put the power wall too hooked up with this new set of panels and that way the new panels plus the power wall two will act in phase A. So that's phase A. And the existing panels we are going to move over to phase B. And of course phase C will act separately. And of course we've got a net meter. So with a net meter when the grid is running, it doesn't matter how much the existing panels or the new panels are supplying to the power wall to or to the grid or to the house, it all gets net metered out back to the grid and we get billed accordingly um, because it sort of does the maths for us and it does evens things out. So that's quite handy having a net meter of course. Now in the event of a blackout, this is when it gets interesting. So in a blackout situation, of course, a power wall two only acts uh, to back up a single phase. So what's gonna happen is that in a blackout, this gets canceled out, my panels don't work anymore. Phase C, of course, gets canceled out. Uh, no grid coming in, of course. And that way, phase A is only in operation in a blackout situation, whereby the new panels, the more efficient panels, will continue to charge the power wall two, and the power wall two will power the house if the blackout continues into the night time, the battery can still power the home. So that's uh, handy having the power wall two uh, and a three phase home where you can black back up um, phase A, uh, put all your essential things like your kitchen appliances, the fridge, uh, onto phase A and that way it still keeps going in a blackout situation. 
So by now, I'm sure you're wondering, how much did Tesla Tom pay for his new panels? Well, I was presented with two options by my installer. Trina panels, LG Neon 2, both Enphase microinverters, both very similar in wattage, both very similar in output. In the end, this was the cost of the Trina, $6,890. This was the cost of the LG, $9,940. So I thought long and hard about this. There's almost, in fact, more than a $3,000 difference between Trina and LG Neon 2. Trina being uh, Chinese panels, but they are, of course, the largest supplier of uh, solar panels in the world. LG's got a fantastic reputation, of course, uh, Korean made. $3,000 difference, I thought, uh, is it worth it? Again, Trina has got a 10 year warranty. And that is a product warranty. And, that, and LG has got a 25-year uh, product warranty. And both have got a 25-year uh, performance guarantee. So I wasn't concerned about that. And I thought very hard to myself, is it worth paying $3,000 more for 15 years worth of warranty? And I thought, well, you know what? My payback for $7,000 is about seven years, because if you've seen my other videos, if I were to get five kilowatt worth of panels, I would be saving about $1,000 per year extra. So seven year payback versus almost a 10 year payback. And I thought to myself, in 10 years time, if it, if it does fail, which is very unlikely, solar panels are very hardy, I would pay back my product and I probably want to refresh my roof anyway and get higher wattage panels. Payback time is three years longer. Sure, it's got a 25 year product warranty, but I thought to myself, am I gonna be annoyed that in 10 years time, there are gonna be better panels and I wanna install newer panels, but I'm gonna feel upset because I'm wasting my 15 year product warranty. And also in Australia, I'm sort of hedging my bets because we've got a very strong Australian consumer law protection. So for those who don't know in Australia, uh, we, you know, we're very much protected by our consumer commission here. We can pretty much argue any case. And I thought, you know what, if, if anything were to happen, I could always try to argue that it's a performance issue rather than a product issue. I mean, how could you possibly know the difference, right? If your, if your performance is going down, you know, is it a performance issue or is it something wrong with the product? And also, if, if there were damage to the panels through hailstorm or whatever, I can always claim insurance um, rather than claiming a product warranty, which wouldn't be covered anyway, right? The only reason why you, you might fail is if you were to move your pa panel position of your panels, right? So that may possibly come under product warranty, but again, I'm probably not gonna move my panels in that time. Will I be here in 10 years time? I don't know, I can't predict the future. So I thought, you know what? I'd rather a quicker payback with a you know reasonably good reputation uh, panels like the Trina panels, hot, biggest supplier of panels in the world versus LG. I know they're good quality, but I just wasn't sure whether it was worth paying $3,000 more uh, for, for LG panels. So, you know what, in the end, I guessed I ticked Trina, and so I'm getting Trina panels with Enphase microinverters. Now, the next question I want to address is why did I choose microinverters over string? At present time, there's only one brand of microinverters, and that's Enphase. So, anything Enphase is micro. String inverters are like Fronius. SMA, basically everything else, right? I chose microinverters for two reasons. Number one, shading. Now I showed you in my picture of my house that that lower uh, roof has some shading issues towards the end of the day because my neighbor's house uh, and also my own roof does cover some of those panels. If you have shading issues, it's probably better to go with micro and you are paying probably uh, one to two thousand dollars more than you would for a s equivalent string inverters and I certainly was with my quote uh, I had other quotes from other companies and they were about five thousand dollars for an equivalent um, product without Enphase they were using Fronius so I chose uh, Enphase for one shading if one panel goes down because of shading or bird poop or something that's affecting the performance of one panel if you're using string inverters the rest of the panel system will also go down with it whereas if you've got Enphase microinverters if one panel goes down then the others keep going. Why does that happen? Because behind every panel for microinverters, there is an inverter sitting at the back here. And they all join up via AC cables towards your home. Whereas a string inverter, basically they're in series. 
um, and they all link up to a main inverter in the house. And that brings me to my second issue, which is safety. Now, this is not that big an issue, but you know what? I figured um, I've got the capacity to pay a little bit more, so I'm going to choose safety because, like I said, with the micro inverters, you're running AC cables to your home, whereas with the string inverter, uh, these are all D DC cables going to your house before they hit the inverter. So it's AC here from the inverter to the home, it's DC cabling from the rooftop to the inverter. So that concerned me a little bit. Uh, I've got young children in the house and a few stories of fires happening in commercial properties and residential properties freaked me out just a touch so I thought just for a bit more money slight better peace of mind with Enphase um, AC cabling with inverters behind every panel versus DC. Again I want to stress that this risk is low but I figured I'm going to try and reduce the risk as much as I can. So guys in summary like I said I'm installing a 5.4 kilowatt solar system, Trina panels, plus Enphase micro inverters for shade and safety reasons like I mentioned. I'm paying $6,890. This includes $3,115 worth of government rebate. So without that rebate it would have been close to $10,000. It includes a $690 uh, discount because I'm a Tesla owner as part of the Tesla Owners Club of Australia. If you're in Sydney, speak to Pete from SolarRay, he's fantastic. Uh, he's also a certified Powerwall 2 installer, so he'll certainly integrate that with your home if you're thinking of adding new panels to your home. Alright guys, thanks for watching, hope you enjoyed that. Please feel free to leave a comment, love to hear from you. I want to hear your thoughts on my installation, and don't forget to like, comment and subscribe. Thanks for supporting Ludicrous Feed, have a nice day, and as always, happy charging. Thanks for watching, and thanks for being part of the energy revolution. If you haven't done so already, be sure to hit subscribe to stay up to date with our latest videos. Happy charging!